So good morning and happy new year. Welcome to our first service in Midstock at Church in 2022. Our minister Tanya is on a well-deserved break and today's service is led by the worship group. We thank Tanya in her absence for helping us to share worship material which we've adapted for today's service. Church activities within our church buildings apart from worship have been suspended at least until the end of January. This will be kept under review. Please note the slide asking you to, to kindly do a lateral flow test before attending any, any worship and also to stay at home if you have any cold-like symptoms. There's a plea from Alison. We need people to do Bible readings. Please see Alison if you can help. The men's group are hoping to meet in Victoria Park, depending on COVID regulations, but our arrangements will be confirmed nearer the time. The book group will be meeting on Zoom on the 19th of January. And good news is that we do have some spare bulbs, about 700 bulbs that have formed the, the garden that are spare for people to use. So please bring bags along next week and, and you can collect some daffodil bulbs and leave a donation for the church. So bring your bags along to collect some bulbs, which will be outside the church. Cafe Church on Zoom is on the 26th of January and is going to be Scottish themed. And I'll call you to worship. Come, bring the gold of your heart, bring the myrrh of your lives, Bring the frankincense of your prayers and worship Christ the King. Come in wonder, come in thankfulness, come as you can, come as you are, come and worship Christ the King. We will now join together in worship singing hymn 600, Spirit of God Unseen as the Wind. Please remember to keep your mask on while singing but you're free to stand, if able, and move around to see the words if needed. for a new year, a new day, a new beginning, an opportunity to live out our lives the way you planned. We are here because we know that together there is so much more to learn and discover as your family. It is not easy to follow you. 
There are days when we prefer our own way of doing things rather than your way. We admit we have put ourselves first before others and we know the frustration and hurt we have caused. We know it is not good and we want it to change and make it better. We realise we can't do it by ourselves and we need your help to be a follower of Jesus. We want to be more like him. Thank you that we can have another chance. It gives us such freedom and confidence. These are our prayers in Jesus' name, and in his name I invite you to join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever. Amen. I will now hand over to Shona to continue with our worship. The first reading this morning is from Matthew chapter 2, verses 1 to 12. The Magi visit the Messiah. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one who has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed and all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me, so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshipped him. When they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense and myrrh. And having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. Amen. Let's join now to sing We Three Kings of Orientar.
first Sunday after Epiphany, which was last Thursday, the 6th of January. The Christmas season is over. The Christmas tree has been stripped of its ornaments. The lights have been turned off for another year. It seems that suddenly we replace the promise and joy of Christmas with what can seem drab and uninviting plainness in comparison. But we're entering the season during which we celebrate the many ways in which Jesus both was and is still revealed in our world. This season brings with it an important challenge, our need to consider what it really means to be followers of Jesus, to follow him not just by coming to church, but to reveal him to others through our deeds and actions. The Magi, who followed a star for years, experienced something. They might not have known specifically why they felt compelled to make the journey, but they went. They encountered the Christ child and went home by a different road. They were changed so much that they literally could not travel home the same way they had come. They went by an altered route to keep Jesus alive. Who knows what happened to them after that? At least they started out in a different path. Do we trust that the love that broke into the world and rested a while in the manger is enough to save us from ourselves? Or are we allowing fear to control us? and allow us to react in ways of hatred and ignorance. We journeyed through Advent and Christmas, and we may have experienced joy or sadness or both. We might question the meaning of it all. We might feel uncomfortable or unsettled. We may have encountered Christ and still experience the awe of the moment. This is all fine. However, no matter what we might want to tell ourselves to maintain our own sense of comfort and control, it really is where we go from here that matters. How will you travel differently? As the year moves on, from the season of Christmas to the season of Epiphany, we welcome those strangers who followed the star and met the Christ. And we wonder, what would it take for us to embark on a journey of discovery, to give up our safety and our complacency, to move beyond comfort to the challenge of the light who leads us in paths we could never imagine, revealing truths we could never perceive, while we cling to the known and the familiar. What would it take for us to embrace the uncertainty and step out in faith led by the light of the world, who beckons us into epiphany. Challenging not just our lives, but the lives of those around. For there will always be those who feel threatened by our awakening to the call to be wise, the call to seek light and love and justice. Words are not enough. We must show ourselves to be changed and challenged by the word. Only then will we be able to continue the work that God sets before us. In our word today, may this season of Epiphany open our hearts and our minds and our hands. As we let go of the things we hold tightly, to be led in a journey, led by the light that came into the world, to dispel darkness. In God's name, Amen. We now sing hymn 356, Meekness and Majesty, Manhood and Deity. <laughs>
Now after they had left, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt, and remain there until I tell you. For Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother by night and went to Egypt and remained there until the death of Herod. This was to fill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet, out of Egypt I have called my son. The massacre of the infants. When Herod saw that he'd been tricked by the wise men, he was infuriated and he sent and killed all the children in and around Bethlehem who were two years or under, according to the time that he'd learned from the wise men. Then was fulfilled what had been spoken through the prophet Jeremiah. A voice was heard in Ramah, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weeping for her children, she refused to be consoled because they are no more. The return from Egypt. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother, and go to the land of Israel, for those who are seeking the child's life are dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But he, when he heard that Achilles was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. There he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. I don't think that when Herod gave orders for the massacre, it was an epiphany. It certainly couldn't be described as a coming to your senses moment more like losing his senses. It says he flew into a passion. Is that a bit like a temper? Did he regret it later? We don't know. But we do know that actions taken couldn't be undone and were devastating. Unfortunately, the passage, a voice was heard in Rama, wailing and loud lamentation. Rachel weep for her children. She refused to be consoled because they are no more has been all too appropriate too often. Now last year, without having to think too hard, we can remember the loss of many people due to COVID and the loss of lives from natural disasters such as earthquake in Hayati, flooding in China, Belgium and Germany, the typhoon in the Philippines, and so it goes on. These are some of the big world news stories that will possibly be brought to mind within this text. At Christmas, we've talked about the Prince of Peace coming into the world. And then the next week, we're remembering that all was not sweetness and light after his birth. Rachel's and others are still weeping, and Christmas didn't fix that. Jesus' birth didn't stop horrible things from happening. But his birth as an innocent infant does stand in stark contrast to the corruption of the adult Herod. The promise of the birth of Jesus is not, all, is not that all difficulties will cease to exist, but that in the middle of them all, God is trying to do something completely different. Not fighting power with power, but overcoming power by choosing weakness. Not fighting violence with violence, but offering peace in its midst. We condemn, condemn Herod for his actions, and rightly so but perhaps we should think a little bit more about his motivations. Just look at the lengths he'll go in order to resist what scares him, to resist God who comes so freely, so simply. Perhaps the new year is a time to think about what lengths we go in order to resist the challenge of one whose birth we were just singing about so joyfully over the Christmas period. The New Year's traditionally been a time for creating resolutions, making changes, re-evaluating. As we enter 2022, let us all take the opportunity to lay aside our grudges. 
and our fears that make us act less graciously, and to gather our warmest memories, most important lessons, and strongest wishes, reflect on them and carry them into this new year, open to the epiphanies that God will bring to us, open to the transformation of our lives by Jesus changing us and renewing our lives. In God's name, Amen. Shona will now lead us in prayer. Before our prayers of intercession, I have some sad news of two deaths to announce. The Reverend George Cowie, husband of our former Minister Marion, died peacefully after a long illness at home with his family in Balloch on the 21st of December. His funeral is on Wednesday the 12th of January at 12 noon in New Kilpatrick Parish Church in Bearsden, Glasgow. The service can be followed online from a link on the Church of Scotland web pages. We also heard this week of the death of Alan McDougall, who died peacefully at home in Carnegie Crescent on the 28th of December. His funeral will be at Aberdeen Crematorium East Chapel on Tuesday, January 11th at 1 p.m. And we remember both families in our prayers. Let us pray. When the song of the angels is stilled, when the shepherds are back with their flocks, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to bring peace among the people, to make music in the heart. God our Creator, for every star in the sky, for all the different ways you lead us to your Son, we praise you for the dreams you place in our hearts, for the joy of knowing we are loved, we praise you. As this new year begins, with our voices, our bodies and our lives, we praise you. Eternal God, for whom a thousand years are a blink of an eye, we pray for your people gathered here and elsewhere. May this new year shine a light on all our dark places, a light that will lead us towards greater love and unity. Just as the Magi long ago sought your presence in the world, let us do the same. As you reveal yourself in and among us, show us all the places where we get in the way of your transforming love. Let us linger at the manger long enough to see you in the world, in friends and strangers and in ourselves. Be with those who lead us, those who challenge us, and those who have not yet come through our doors. We pray for the whole of creation. You created us to be good stewards of this earth. You come to us in the wonders of nature. May we honour you by caring for those sacred places. We pray for all the nations of the world. Show us the way of peace and give us the strength to pursue it with unflagging passion. We pray for all those who suffer in body, mind or spirit. Use our hands to offer gentleness, and our words to speak comfort. Help us to remember that no pain is too great for you to bear, and no loss can remove your love from us. In the dark days of grief and anger, we may turn from your light, yet you remain present. May we be a witness to your light for those who are adrift in pain or grief, holding hope for those who are unable to hold it for themselves. We pray this morning for the friends and families of those who have suffered recent bereavements. We pray particularly for Marion, Graham and Kay Cowie following the loss of George and for June McDougall and her family who have lost Alan. We ask, Lord, that you would comfort them 
and that they, they would know your presence with them in their loss. God, who is both light and love, you have brought us through to another year and given us the choice of roads to follow from here. All that we need for the deepest joy you freely offer us. May our gratitude lead us to the light. Hear our prayers in the name of the light that shines through all darkness. Amen. Let's join now to sing As With Gladness, Men of Old. <laughs> Blessing together, may the peace of God go with us. Amen. 